Good morning and welcome to Integrity Church. I hope we have all had a great week. Um, today is Sunday the 19th of December, which means that it is just six days until Christmas. Um, I, for one, am very excited. Um, I hope you are too and I hope you're all prepared. Um, today's service by Pastor will be called um, Christmas, an adventure with zero risk. Um, the sermon is going to be blessed. It's going to be um, one for everyone. So invite your friends, um, invite um, your family, share the links, um, remove all distractions because this is not a sermon that you're going to want to miss. And um, let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, the message that is to come, Lord Jesus, and for the viewers that are um, listening to us through Facebook Live, Lord, that you will open their hearts and open their ears, Lord Jesus, to what you have in store for them today, Lord, um, that you remove all distractions from around them, Lord Jesus, that they'll be able to receive the word that you have for them today, Lord, and it will change their lives for the better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the service. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Integrity Church where every soul matters. We're about to have a wonderful time in God's presence. I just want to start by saying Merry Christmas. Here at Seasons Greetings to you all. And um, as we enter into a time of lifting up the name of God, let us remember what this, what the real reason for the season is. Amen. My debt to pay 
From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, from heaven to earth, to show the way from the eye to the cross, my death to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, Together worthy, 
all together wonderful to me. The Bible reading for today is taken from John chapter 1, from verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. He were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Welcome again to our Christmas service. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, I pray that you open our eyes, the eyes of our heart, and incline our heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness this morning. We ask that let this Christmas be a time when we obtain the reality of the freedom purchased for us by the coming of Jesus Christ. Do a miracle of the heart in us and all that we listen to this message in the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, um, you will not be tired of hearing uh, the greetings, Merry Christmas. Uh, till the end of the month, at least. So we thank God for the privilege of being able to do this. And it's yet another Christmas service, the last Sunday before the Christmas day. Uh, last week, we looked at uh, three responses to Christmas, to the birth of Jesus, which include being joyful, being troubled, or just indifference. And we exhort us that we should be on the joyful side uh, because 
when you are indifferent, you are likely to be sucked in to the trouble spot. And the trouble spot is not good, uh, as you saw. Uh, today, I want to talk to us, how to bring a Christmas message to us. And it may not be uh, the hairy fairy type of Christmas message that you are uh, accustomed to, where we sing, you know, uh, in a manger, no creep for heaven, the lead to Lord Jesus, you know, all those stuff. Uh, while angels walk their flows, why not their carols, something like that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I believe that, I mean, that's good, all well and good, um, celebrating that Jesus came. But I believe it's more important to highlight the purpose of his coming, his message, his mission, and how it affects us now, not just that he came and then whatever. So here this morning, I want to share with us that aspect of Christmas, that is, why did Jesus come? What was his mission? The title of my message is Christmas, an adventure with zero risk. Why? <laughs> Are you saying zero risk? What has that got to do with Christmas, risk and adventure? Well, you you, you will soon know because uh, Jesus is coming, which is Christmas, uh, is actually an adventure. Let me tell you what risk is so that you see how uh, it, it works. Because you will say there is no adventure without risk. Um, I happen to be, in addition to be minister of the gospel, I happen to be a compliance professional and uh, have what is called IOSH uh, uh, qualification, which is Institute of Occupational uh, uh, for, uh, for Occupation for Health and Safety, you know. So I have an idea of what risk is because the IOSH itself is just, I mean, big on risk assessment. That is, you risk assess any mission, any task, to look at the dangers, the, 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 the hazard, the, the repercussion of, you know, the worst that could happen if uh, the worst happened, <laughs> the, the consequences of the worst thing that could happen, go wrong. And so for me to come here and say something is without zero risk, I will need to define risk <laughs> because we, we've been taught in compliance and health and safety that there is not such thing as zero risk. There's always a risk, uh, but it has to be managed. That's what's important there. I want to tell you that Jesus is coming. Christmas is with zero risk. It was not managed, as in, you know, just minimizing the risk. There was no risk. And as I said, for that to make sense, I need to define what I mean by risk. Well, uh, risk is simply an action that exposes someone to the possibility of loss or injury. So if anything will expose you to the possibility of a loss or an injury, uh, that thing is a risk. So if you take a risk, that means you can lose something, all right? Um, you can lose money, you can lose face, <laughs> you can lose your life. I mean, uh, what's worse again, if you take a risk, you can endanger other people and not just yourself. So that's worse than you losing your money or losing your face or losing your life. I mean, if you lose other people's money, other people's life, that's worse, all right? <laughs> okay. So, why would anybody take risk in this life? Well, because life comes with risk. Anything you do comes with that. There's always that possibility of losing your investment, 
uh, your your effort in achieving that thing. Okay, and so why would you do that? Well, because at times it is wise. Uh, it's a wise thing to do uh, if what you are likely to lose uh, is small compared to what is going to save. Do you understand that if I risk my life or risk my investment on something and I, 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 it, it went south, that is, it didn't work out, it failed, I lost money and all those things. And on the long run, it's saving some thousands or millions of people elsewhere, then that's a risk worth taking. And I want to submit to you that in such situation, you are at money to actually take that risk. It's going to save if it is going to just mean that you lose your, your, your money or you lose even your life and it's going to save millions of other people there, then it is what uh, we are taught to do. And so uh, it may not be loving then to choose comfort of security when something greater can be achieved for the curse of God or for the good of others. And that's exactly what Jesus did, right? He left his comfortable home in heaven and he came in through a manger, <laughs> not even a room in the inn or hotel for him. Um, yeah, it must be for something much greater than the comfort that he left in heaven. And so we are asked to do so. Uh, so why, why, why should we say there is risk then? Then uh, the, the reason that there is such thing as risk is that you don't know the outcome of something. Uh, if you are ignorant of the outcome of something, that's when there is risk. But if you knew that you are going to uh, lose X amount of money, before going into a, a, a business or an investment, then it's no risk. You you knew that, so it's no surprise to you. I mean, it's, it's something that's an investment. That, yeah. All right. And so uh, let me put it in a, in a positive way. Uh, if you are a, a, a gambler or you bet and you knew the outcome of a football match, for example. And you knew, for some reasons, I understand that in, 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 in days back, before the advent of internet and all the technology now, um, the way people used to cheat when they bet on, on, on football games is that in some part of the world, there's what they call short wave uh, radio uh, that allows them to know ahead because of time difference they know the result of matches in some time zone ahead of time. So before the results are declared, they go to another time zone and enter the result there. I mean, at that point in time, there is no risk because the match had been finished, you knew the result, and you stake, whatever you stake on that is no risk. Do you understand? <laughs> So if you know the outcome, if you are not ignorant of the outcome of a process or a thing, then there is no risk involved there. So now you know why I said Jesus is coming, Christmas, it was an adventure with zero risk. Why? Because the outcome was predetermined, was planned, unknown before it started <laughs> so there was no it was completed before it came so there was no risk of 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 it not being accomplished because it was finished already uh if you will we are just looking at the playback <laughs> of what has happened already okay have you ever watched a film 
remove it and um, uh, and then you invited some friends to watch it with you and I mean there were cliffhangers hangers in, in in the movie that you thought someone was going to die and all what not and you are assuring them that don't worry it's not going to die <laughs> well, how do you know <laughs> if you can even bet and stick something on it to say that oh that person is not going to die or that is not going to break or fall like that why because you have seen the film you have seen the movie before so no risk in betting that something is going to happen in there okay so risk is therefore just involved when you don't know the outcome of a thing so i hope my no risk stance makes the difference now so that means that God can take no risk. God does not take risk. Why? Because he knows all things. He's omniscient. He knows all things. There's nothing that is known or that, is, that exists that is supposed to be known or <laughs> anything that's happening. is all-knowing God. Whether the thing is about to happen, happened in the past, or somebody is planning it, or anything, he knows all things. So by that, he doesn't have the possibility of taking risk. So that means for everything that he allows to happen, he knew the outcome, he's prepared for the outcome, and is the outcome that he planned is what is going to be. So let's dive into the Christmas part of it then. So what was Jesus' mission? I call it an adventure, but what was his mission? Number one is to save us from our sins. Matthew chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. The Bible says, but while he thought about these things, who was either Joseph Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she brought forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. So that's the number one mission of Jesus, to save you from your sins, to save me from my sins. That's what Christmas is about. We are celebrating that Jesus came to save us from our sins, all right? Not to make us rich, not to make us, uh, 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 you know, satisfy our uh, our. Uh, fleshly desires, you know, not to be uh, an Aladdin, you know, a magician or genie in the box, you know, and all those stuff. He came to save us from our sins. I'm going to go a bit faster now. Number two, he came to give us life. John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. And so, number one, save us from our sin. Number two, to give us life abundantly. Number three, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He said, He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Okay? I mean, talk of manifesto or agenda, it's there. I mean, everything that I'm saying, word for word verbatim, is there that that was what Jesus came to do. When I say Jesus, what came, Jesus came to do, I'm telling you, in other words, that's what Christmas is all about. That's what we are celebrating. Number four, he came to redeem us from the law and its curse. Galatians chapter 
4 verses 3 to 5. He said, even so, we, when we are children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to do what? To redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And then further down uh, in, 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 in the book of Galatians, he said that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. So he redeemed us from being under the Lord and redeems us from the curse of the Lord for it is written, cause is everyone that hangs on a tree. Number five, he came to save us from our enemies. All right, he came to save us from our sins. He came to save us from our enemies. All right, uh, Luke chapter one, verses 70 to 71. He says, as he spoke by the mouth of the prophet, this was Simeon, the, the, the one that God had told that he would not die until he had seen the, the birth of the, the, the Messiah, came into the temple by the Spirit, and he had it to say in the dedication of Jesus Christ, baby Jesus. So, and he spoke by the mouth of his prophet, as God spoke by the mouth of his prophet, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, okay, and from the hands of those who hate us, okay? So, clearly, I hate to disappoint you um, if you think nobody hates you. <laughs> uh, you may not be Chris, you know, Chris, everybody hates Chris, you know, uh, so you may not be hated by everybody, but uh, I can guarantee you somebody does not like you somewhere. <laughs> but Jesus Christ came to save you from those kind of people also. So if you are a follower of Christ, a believer in Christ, whether someone likes you or hates you, would not matter because Jesus Christ will save you from those that even hate you, from your enemies. Number six, Jesus Christ came to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. We find that one in Luke chapter 1, verse, 30, verse 72. He said, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant. All right? So all these things, you are thinking, uh, you are saying all this without risk. Well, uh, it's not over yet. Let me give you two more things that he came to do. Uh, and you can give yourself some time to study the gospel, and you see probably some other things that I've left out here. But I think this eight will do. Number seven, he came to serve. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. He said, For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. <laughs> so, I mean, talk of clear court agenda and purpose and mission. He did not come to be served. He came to serve. And so that's why is one of his chief names was, was the, 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 the servant of the Lord, you know, the servant of the Lord, okay? Uh, I, we want to be apostle, you know, we want to be prophet, you know, we want all those titles. But the one that is the most high, himself said, is the servant of the Lord, is, is one of his greatest titles, the servant of the Lord, okay? So he came to serve. And uh, last, in the manifesto and mission that I'm sharing with us, is to deliver us from the power of death. To deliver us from the power of death. And we find that in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. It said, Inasmuch as the children 
have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Wow. I mean, I'm almost tempted to say, even if you forget the first seven purposes of mission, that one that I just read, isn't that big enough to celebrate Christmas? Isn't that big enough to, you know, rejoice and to say you are a follower of Jesus Christ? I'll read that again. It says, Inasmuch as the children have partaken the flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So before Jesus came, the devil had the power of death. What is the power of death? The power of death is the fear of dying. <laughs> That's all. Because once you die, you die, isn't it? But the fear of dying is the power. So it will paralyze you from doing what you need to do while you are alive. And that's the power of death. Because the power is the power of death is not to kill you. Because everybody dies. Alright? So something's got to kill you, even if it is death. <laughs> you know. And so that's not the that while you are still alive, the fear of dying paralyzing you to do that which you want to do, that which God has provided for you to enjoy. That is, you are not enjoying life because you are afraid of dying. I mean, it's, it's a bondage. The Bible calls it that it's a lifetime of bondage. Some, someone said... Uh, I like a transition that puts it, it's a, a, a lifetime or lifelong slavery. Thank God for abolition of slavery and thank God for uh, 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 efforts that are going on to, to, to tackle what is called modern slavery. But what effort are you doing to free yourself from the lifelong slavery of the fear of death? I have good news for you. Jesus came to set that free, to set you free. Jesus came to abolish that slavery, that slavery to the fear of death, so that you can enjoy all things that God has provided for you. The Bible says that God has given us all things richly to enjoy. So he came to die. Because it is only through death that it can rescue us and wrestle off the power from the devil himself. So, I mean, uh, time will not permit us to, to go into all kinds of things. I mean, is, is it not ironic that since the devil knew that the Redeemer was coming, He's been plotting. He's been looking for ways of killing him, for killing him. I mean, right from the birth, you see how we saw how uh, King Herod killed babies, all babies, boys that were below the age of two years old when the wise men went to inquire of him. Why? To kill Jesus, to wipe him out. So, is it not ironic that it is through killing him that he is going to be dispossessed. <laughs> That's why the Bible says that the wisdom of God, that if the princes of this world had known, they wouldn't have crucified the king of glory. All right? 
Now, he didn't he think twice that every time that he tried to kill him, he escaped. He didn't wasn't able to do it. And then at the age of 33 years plus, the person that he has tried all his existence to kill showed up and said, Oh yeah, kill me. Ah. And the devil said, eh? Ah. For free like that? Ah. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> and he did. And that was his water. And he said, all this risk, zero, zero risk. Well, I'll tell you. Because all this was pre-planned, was finished before Jesus came, there was no risk there. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 24. He says, The Son of Man indeed goes, just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Okay? Uh, in Luke chapter 22, verse 22, we see uh, what that means. When they say something is written, this is what it means. Luke chapter 22, verse 22. Yes. And truly, the Son of Man goes as it has been determined. So, what is written simply means what has been determined. It is determined. I mean, I mean so uh, you can't do anything about it. It's determined. You are not trying to figure it out. You have figured it out. It's determined. <laughs> All right. So, uh, and then, not less than three times, Jesus said to his disciples, that he was going to be killed, he was going to be buried, and he was going to rise the third day. All right? Matthew chapter 17, verses 22 to 23. That's one of the times. He said, Now, while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. <laughs> And on the third day, he will be raised up. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Wow. Jesus knew that uh, such things, you have to say it more than once. <clears throat> so in Matthew chapter 20, verses 18 to 19, he said to them again, Behold, we are going to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes. And they will condemn him to death and deliver him to die uh, to the Gentiles to mock and to squash and to crucify. And on the third day, I will rise again. There was no place that Jesus said he was going to die without adding and ending it that he was going to rise on the third day. Remember when Herod was going to kill him? And they came to him and said, Oh, Herod is trying to kill you. What are you doing in his territory? He's going to kill you. He said, Go and tell that fox. He said, Today I'm doing miracle cures. Tomorrow I'm performing cures. And on the third day I'll be perfected. So, I mean, do you think this is guesswork? Do you think there's a risk in this? If there was a risk there, would he be talking so confidently? <laughs> okay. Well, in case you are not convinced yet, after Jesus died and rose again and went back to heaven and his disciples were uh, 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 preaching, you know, received the gift of the Holy Spirit and began to spread the word around. In Luke chapter 2, in Matthew, sorry, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. This was uh, uh, Peter 
giving an account of what happened when they received the Holy Spirit. He said, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate purpose and foreknowledge of God. <laughs> so everything that happened to Jesus was predetermined. It was foreknown by God. Okay? So you have taken by your lawless hand, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. It was not possible. It's like saying it's not possible to fail. There's no risk in this. It's not possible. So if it was possible, <laughs> you think the devil would have let him go? But it was not possible. Okay, It was predetermined. It's a playback. Everything that Jesus came to do, it was a playback of what had been done, scripted, written, determined, and completed, concluded before he came. So there was no room for, there's just no room for error. There, there's no risk there. Okay, let's hear what Jesus himself said. <clears throat> John chapter 10, verses 16 to 18. He said, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my father loves me, because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up. This command I have received from my father. Wow. Are you still in doubt? Jesus said, I have the power to lay my life down, and I have the power to take it up. All right. So what's the risk there? It's zero. I can't even say it's minimal. It's zero. Zero risk involved there. And finally, as I round up, Revelation chapter 23, 13, verses 7 to 9. It says, It was granted, it was granted to him. Who is the him there? This is the Antichrist. You've heard of that over and over again, Antichrist. The one that they say is bringing 666. You've heard that before? Okay. One of these days we are going to look at end time events and share with you how it is unfolding. I can tell you that it's on track. Okay. There's nothing that you can do to stop it. Anything you are doing, you are just accelerating it. You are enhancing it because you can do nothing against God's plan. You cannot run God out of history. It's his history. <laughs> He's written it. He's just playing it out. Okay. Said so it was granted to him, that is the Antichrist, the beast, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Wow. <laughs> and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose name have not been written in the book of life and of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If you have an ear, as if anyone has an ear, let him hear. That's my Christmas message to you. You see that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world before the world began, before the whole story began. I mean, he's been finished. He's been slain and he rose before the world began. 
So there's nothing that will catch God unawares that he's not aware of. Satan's rebellion, Adam's fall, man's fall, and all those things. You think all those things happen and God said, ah, well, we didn't plan for this. Uh, let's call an angelic council meeting, corporal meeting in heaven. <laughs> and say, uh, now, how do we solve this now? Uh, what do you think, Angel Michael? Uh, Gabriel, what do you think? <laughs> no, no, no. God is not like that. If God is ever like that, then uh, we are all in the same category. But God forbid, is not in the same category with us. So that's my Christmas message with you. I say, I pray that God would give you an ear to hear. And that you'll be able to embrace the things that has been given unto you. So if Jesus' mission, Christmas, is without risk, what has that got to do with you today? It means that your freedom has been purchased by the Jesus, by the Christmas, by the, 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 the Jesus' coming himself. You see, he's delivered you from the fear of death himself. So so that you can freely enjoy that which God has given to you, and that there's nothing risky in carrying out God's plan for your life. You may lose money, you can lose your life, but that is not the ultimate loss. Because he who gave you the assignment, just like gave Jesus, knew the outcome before giving you. So, live life freely, dare to do great things, dare to obey God, dare to embrace His mission and purpose for your life, regardless of what the world calls risk about it. When you are obeying God, there is no risk about the outcome, because the worst is probably loss of life, but to die will then begin. Merry Christmas. Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Thank you because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Thank you for this Christmas. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for preserving our lives, even in this pandemic, because we are alive we know that you have a purpose for us and you are not done with us yet. You are preserving us from all evil and no evil shall befall us, nor any plague come near our dwelling. Thank you for this message today. We ask that you give us an ear to hear and an eye to see and mouth to speak and a heart to obey you and to keep your word, to trust you all the way to the end that your name will be glorified in our lives and we will richly enjoy all things that you have provided for us and embrace what Christmas brought in Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Thank God for that message. I am sure you were blessed because I absolutely was. And even though some of you may say you have heard some of those scriptures before, but how are we applying them in our lives? How is it making a difference in our lives, knowing that um, we have been delivered, you know, from the fear of death? I want to encourage you to listen to it again and again. And I believe that as you listen to it, God will enlighten you the more and help us all to be doers of his word and not hearers only. That the things that we hear will do us good, you know, and make a difference in our lives because that's what it's all about. It's not enough to just listen to the word and say, I attended church. 
I listen to the message. It needs to have an impact in our lives. And I pray that the Lord will help um, us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now um, it's offering time and it's blessing time. The details are on your screen if you'd like to give a free will offering. Let's just have a word of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for your word that has just come forth. Thank you so much, Lord, for the love that you have for us in sending your son, Jesus, even to deliver us from our sins and to deliver us from the fear of death. We just appreciate you. We ask, oh Lord, that you will give us a revelation of exactly why Jesus came and what he did, that we will be free to live the lives that you have predestined us to live in serving you, in sharing your word, and in um, sh sharing it so that others too can come into the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We thank you for pastor. Thank you for how you have used him. We ask, oh Lord, that you will refill him to overflowing, even as virtue has come out of him. We ask that you will anoint him more. You will give him utterance more. And you will continue to expound the scriptures to him, that as he releases himself to you, O oh Lord, you will fill him to overflowing, that he will be able to present to us and um, minister to us the things that you have ministered to him in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to give to you out of that which you've given us. As we sow our seeds today, remembering the love that Jesus has for us, remembering your gift to us by sending Jesus, we ask that you will use this offering for the furtherance of your kingdom and you will cause the blessings of those that give to be ours in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um... Now it's time to close the service and I'm just going to read the benediction from Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 and 21. That's Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. It says, Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you complete in every good work to do his will, working in you what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, I want to wish you all a uh, Merry Christmas. As you, um, because by the time we have the next service, Christmas will be over. So as you go this week, preparing for Christmas, let's remember that there is no Christmas, there is no celebration without Christ. Jesus is the reason for the season. If you're writing your Christmas cards, please don't write Xmas because then you have removed Christ from it. And as I've said, he is the reason for the season. The Lord will be with us all. He will continue to give us a revelation of who Jesus is, that our lives will be better for it in the name of Jesus I declare that no evil shall befall us this week in the name of Jesus. In our going out and in our coming in, wherever it is that we're going, I declare that it is well with us in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful celebration and um, see you here next week by his grace. God bless you. Merry Christmas once again. Bye.